How long until we get to his estate? <laughs> We've been flying over his estate for the past two hours. The idea of the movie is that a young coder working for the world's biggest search engine wins a staff competition, and the prize is to spend a week with the enigmatic and genius CEO of the company, Nathan. He's removed himself from humanity for the last few years and has been nestled in his facilities, making his opus, which is a machine with conscious thought. It's a tricky locations and production design problem, but you've got to have the house of the richest guy in the world. <laughs> How do you do that? It's a world that we touch on not very often, which is the world of the super, super powerful and a man-made machine. I've never met anyone new before. Only Nathan. You know how I cracked him? I don't know how you did any of this. He's doing something here that is highly secretive, so it, it made sense to have something that is as unexposed to the world as possible. We knew that if we found a really spectacular landscape, the landscape would provide a lot of the power of the guy. If he owns this landscape, it would be implicit. We are in West Norway. These are some of Nathan's robot sheep. They made it on such a grand scale. At the same time, I see it as Eden here in a way. The actual location we found is built on the side of a mountain, and that mountain comes into the front room. So we followed that through into our subterranean world. This is where Ava was created. Nathan's space has a bit of this natural rock in it as well. On one of his walls, we have, I think there's five or 6,000 post-it notes to mirror Nathan's genius and the enormity of creating AI. You're impressed. <laughs> yes, yes. The design trick then becomes about making a house that at first seemed beautiful and desirable feel scary. How can we suggest that this creation is absolutely trapped? In the script, Ava and Caleb have their sequence of conversations separated by a glass panel. What we decided to do was build a glass cube within a room. There are trees within which she can't get to, but she views. You've never been outside this building. I've never been outside the room I'm in now. There's a massive cruelty to that, this sense of imprisonment. She is imprisoned in it, and I think ultimately she realizes that. Mark said, let's give Ava a lot of room to walk around, but let's keep Caleb in a tiny box. It's a good example of how production design feeds into a story, because then when Ava walks around, she's more like a tiger in a zoo, walking backwards and forwards over the same spot. And you think, she shouldn't be here. She should actually be elsewhere. And the fact that Caleb is in this little box, but then can just walk out and be in this huge landscape, such a jump from sitting alone in a room with a bit of paper to seeing a kind of breathing world. Fantastic. Where would you go if you did go outside? I'm not sure. There are so many options.